Alrighty, so today's video is something that kind of ended up just becoming a topic that I wanted to talk about because of a reel and a TikTok that I made. So let me play that for you right here. You sure about that? You sure about that? You sure about that? Now that reel on TikTok, nobody seemed to really care that much about it. But on, t on Instagram, a lot of people were like genuinely upset with what I was saying. So I actually ended up making another reel to kind of explain myself a little bit. But on Instagram, you only get 90 seconds for a reel and there was just so much that I wanted to say. So it kind of showed me that there genuinely is a lot of people that are maybe a little bit misunderstanding of this concept and a lot of people that genuinely thought I was saying something that I wasn't. So this video, I want to explain myself a little bit more. So when it comes to losing weight, I believe in the laws of thermodynamics, right? So calories in versus calories out, that's how you lose weight. Now, just because that's a simple concept, that doesn't mean that it's easy for people. Clearly, it's something that's very, very difficult for a lot of people to do. And you hear a lot, and I'm sure, I know, I feel like maybe it's not as popular now, but I remember when I was growing up, and I think I even used to say it, right? Oh, the reason I'm not losing weight is because I'm not eating enough. And so many people, I feel like, genuinely believe that if they just eat more, the fact that they have more calories is the reason that they are losing weight. And I do believe that sometimes, for some people, eating a little bit more calories daily can actually result in weight loss. But I don't believe that it's some random thing that your body all of a sudden has extra calories and now you're losing weight. There's usually explanations as to why eating more calories will put you in a deficit. Before we get into that, I do want to explain some of the, what I think are the common maybe misconceptions or mistakes that people make that genuinely think they're eating, you know, 1200 calories and they're not able to lose weight. The first most popular one, and uh, I, I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings, but a lot of times people are just not calculating the amount of calories that they're eating correctly. And that's totally fine. There's a lot of labels that are made to make us feel like we're eating a certain amount when we're actually eating twice, three times as much, right? Um, and it's just, it's a hard thing to do. If if you've never tracked your calories, it's really, really hard to be completely accurate when you are tracking your calories for the first time. So I feel like one of the most common things that are happening is people think they're eating 1,200, 1,500 calories, but if they actually were tracking correctly or they had someone that had a little bit more knowledge and was able to help them with tracking, they'll realize that they're actually eating maybe a little bit more than they thought each day. Another really, really common thing that you'll see is people will genuinely be eating, you know, 1,200, maybe even 1,000 calories three to four days out of the week. But what ends up happening is they end up overeating, and this is me as well, this is what happened to me, you end up overeating on those days where you're not eating 1,000 and you don't realize how much, I don't wanna say damage, but just how many extra calories you can consume when you just kinda go YOLO and you're just like, you know what, whatever, it's all good, I'll get back on track tomorrow. Because if you're eating that, you know, that thousand calories for four days out of the week, five days out of the week, but then you end up going overboard and maybe it's not even a binge. Maybe you're just overeating for those two days, but you end up overeating 3000 extra calories, which might sound crazy, but really is not that hard to do. You are now still in a surplus for the week or, or at, at least you're at maintenance. So you're no longer in a deficit. So therefore you are no longer losing weight. One of the biggest points that so many people were like screaming at me in the comments where they were talking about metabolic adaptation. They're like, well, if you're in a deficit for a really long period of time, you're gonna have crazy metabolic adaptation. You're not gonna be able to lose weight anymore because your metabolism is gonna be so messed up. Now, metabolic adaptation is a real thing, but it's not a scary thing. It's not like the only time you get metabolic adaptation is when you have destroyed your diet and your metabolism, right? What metabolic adaptation basically is, is that like, when you are losing weight, right, you are losing mass. And when you have less mass on your body, you no longer require as much energy to maintain that body. So therefore your metabolism adapts, right? And so now you don't need as many calories. So uh, a basic example, if you're 250 pounds, your TDEE, your total daily energy expenditure is going to be different than if you are 200 pounds, right? So if you're 250 pounds versus 200 pounds, that TDEE is going to change. And one of the biggest things that changes that is going to be your BMR or your basal metabolic rate. And so, or I like to call them your coma calories. So because your body is smaller, 
it does not require as many calories. So that's why whenever I talk about losing weight, I say like it's a good idea to recalculate your TDEE um, and every few months when you are losing weight because it is going to change. That is not a bad thing. That doesn't mean that you're ruining your system. It just means that your body is doing what it needs to, right? You are in a smaller body. That body no longer requires as much energy. Now comes the question of, well, how come I had a friend that their coach had them eat a little bit more calories and they started losing weight? I don't wanna say that that is completely out of the question, never gonna happen. I think that there are reasons that explain that, explains that happening. So the first thing is, like we had talked about earlier, where you are, think you are eating, you know, say 5,000 or like 10,000 calories for the week, right? But you are actually eating more because in four or five of those days, you are severely restricting yourself. But then you have two to three days where you're going overboard. And so something that helps a lot of people, this is what helped me, was increasing those daily calories. Instead of forcing yourself to eat a thousand, like increasing it to 1500, and you're no longer as hungry. So you're no longer going on those either binges or just overeating at those times. And so now your weekly calories are still lower than they were before, but you feel like you're eating more because daily on those days where you were very, very restrictive, you don't have to be as restrictive. And so therefore your weekly calories are now a little bit lower. And so you feel like you're eating more. And so now you're losing weight while eating more. Another very common thing that happens when we are severely restricting our calories is that our NEAT goes down. Now, if you're not familiar with NEAT, it stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Basically think like what I'm doing right now, moving my hands, talking, I'm freaking sweating. Uh, I just showered, so I'm still like hot from that. But like it's, it's the things that you're doing that aren't exercise that you do throughout the day that in turn burn calories because obviously you're burning calories all throughout your day. When you are very, very low in calories, I don't know how many of you guys have competed in a bodybuilding show, but if you get really, really lean, once you're really low in those body fat in, in that body fat and you're also really low in the calories that you're eating throughout the day, like I remember for myself, I was not doing anything other than going to the gym and then coming home and working on a video and then I, I didn't do anything. I didn't go walk to the store. I didn't I didn't do anything right so for a lot of people we are we cut our calories so low our neat goes down really really low so a lot of times coaches might have you eat a little bit more and then you feel like you have a little bit more energy right and then on top of that what ends up happening is say you're you're maybe not even going to the gym because you just don't have the energy so then the coach has you start going to the gym you're burning more calories in your workout maybe you start lifting and the more muscle you have the more calories you are burning right and so all of those things add up to you still being in a deficit right and so all of these things i believe explain how you might eat more but you are actually now in a deficit when before maybe you weren't because you were so sedentary and you weren't moving and so now the coach has helped you be in a deficit while eating more but you're moving more you're just fidgeting more because you have a little bit more energy all of these things add to you now losing weight while you are eating more. I know I'm getting kind of heated, uh, literally, but I had a good amount of people like genuinely attacking me, right? And saying that I, some of the comments were like, D you're, you're invalidating women's experience because you're saying this, right? And that's frustrating me because the vast majority of my audience is women. And that is not something that I am at all trying to do. And I get very frustrated when people, coaches, uh, just random in Instagram people, whatever, nutritionists, dietitians, whatever, when they mystify weight loss and they make it seem like you are broken. I hate that, okay? Like I hate when people make others feel like they are broken and the only way to fix themselves is to trust XYZ person. I don't like that, right? It is important to me to break all of this stuff down, demystify it as much as possible and give you, the person watching this video, the tools to change your life, okay? I don't like when people make it seem like they have the answers and only they can help you because I think it's BS, right? I think most of the time, most of the time, you can do it on your own and you can figure this out for yourself and you can change your own life. And I really, really don't like when 
other people make it seem like they have the answers and you have to go to them to get the magic formula to lose weight. Now, I do understand that there are hormonal issues that are going on, PCOS, endometriosis. There are things that make it harder, genuinely, for some women to lose weight, right? Now, I wanna make it clear that is obviously uh, the, a very small percentage of the people that are watching this video. So it's important that, you know, when I'm making videos, I'm making it for the vast majority of us. But even if you are struggling with PCOS, you have endometriosis, you have some hormonal things going on, that doesn't mean that you are a lost cause and that, again, you need to rely on these random people on the internet or these random doctors or random gurus to fix your problems. I do believe that you have what it what it takes inside of you to make the changes that you need to make to see the results that you wanna see. It is going to be harder. Is that fair? No, right? It isn't, but it is what it is. Like, it is what it is. But I do believe that you have it in you to change yourself, right? And so I get very, very frustrated when people come into my comments and they they make it, they send all this jargon, they make it seem like, oh, I am I am the all-knowing and I will solve every issue for you, but you just gotta pay me, right? Or you just gotta sign up for my coaching. It's BS. You can figure it out for yourself. Like I, I truly, truly believe that. And that's why I wanted to make this video. So to end, I just wanna make it clear, losing weight is hard, okay? And if you've, if you've had struggles, you've had slip ups, you've had uh, fallbacks, that's normal. I understand it's very, very difficult, but I do believe in you. I believe that you have what it takes in you to figure things out for yourself. And I truly believe that anybody that wants this can go out there and get it. Um, whether you need some extra help, again, that's, that's going to be up to you to decide. But I do believe that it is important for us to understand the mechanisms that are going on and why certain things might happen. So I hope this helped. Again, this is not going to be for everyone. There's always going to be outliers. I understand that. But for the vast majority, I think that this is at least a good starting point to understand the mechanisms that are going on inside of our body. Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.